Hello and welcome back. In today's lesson, what we're going to be doing is creating a sort of HDR effect and then changing our image from what we see here into something with a darker and creepier type of a look. And we're going to be achieving this all with a few filters, a few effects, and using smart objects after we achieve that HDR effect. So let's go ahead and open up Photoshop. I'm going to create a new document and make it 1920 by 1080. I'll make the resolution anything above 300, so I'll double that at 600. Let's go ahead and bring in our image. And of course we have to resize that to match our canvas size. This particular image comes from freepick.com. I'll have the link in the description below. So now that we have our image to size and our image and our canvas or our document, what we need to do now is change the color mode. So we're going to go to our mode option and then change from RGB to lab color. Don't rasterize. Photoshop will continue to ask you that, but we need to maintain the options with our smart objects. That brings me to my next point. If you're not working with a smart object already, make sure you convert it. All I did was right click on my layer and then went to the option to convert to smart object. So what we're going to be doing now is going into image adjustments and then choosing shadows and highlights. This is going to allow us to bring out more shadows and the shadow intensity if your image doesn't have any. Mine already has a fair amount of shadows, uh, so um, I don't need to make that too drastic. I do want to bring out a fair amount of the highlights, though. That's really where I'm going to be exploiting a lot of tone within this image, and that's going to allow me to darken up and create that creepy effect that I'm looking for. So once you've adjusted the shadow amount and the highlights amount, then what you're going to want to do is go ahead and choose the Show More Options. And here you're going to get a lot more control over the radius and the very specific amounts. So I want to increase the radius on both the shadows and the highlights. And these settings here are not going to be a universal set of numbers that you can apply to every single image. So you're really going to have to work with each image and find the right balance between the shadows and the highlights. So take some time, make sure it looks good. I do want some fairly saturated tones. Usually with an HDR effect, that's pretty consistent. I think that all looks pretty good there. And you can already see that we're starting to get that HDR effect that we're looking for. Go down to our layer panel and then choose the shadows and highlights adjustment or the slider panel. And we're going to convert our mode from normal down to luminosity. And that's going to balance out our tones a little bit nicer. Of 
Okay, so the next step is going to be kind of a bizarre or kind of an abstract step, but it's one of the main strengths of using that of the smart objects. We need to use RGB color mode, but we need to maintain all of the lab color mode. So what we're going to do is make our layer into yet another smart object. What that's going to do is encapsulate or maintain all of the changes, including the lab color, and now give us an additional option to adjust the RGB color. Pretty cool, and you don't have to do this necessarily with the color modes, but you can do this with any effects and any mode changes you want to do within your images. I just want to change the name of my layer. I'm calling this Crazy's Lab. And now we'll go into our RGB mode. And again, you don't want to rasterize. You want to maintain all of the editability and keep all of the options. All right, so our next step is going to be using our color mode selector to select our midtones. And I know that looks really creepy. Let me change that back. Um, but this is going to allow us to select very specific ranges of color. Let me decrease the fuzziness so we can get a more accurate selection and it won't be so intense as we're making our selections. What you want to do now is use the eyedropper and hold down the shift key and then continue to make your selections. And that's going to continue to add to the overall selections that we're going to be choosing. And what I'm, what I'm doing, what I'm looking for is midtones. So I'm looking for anything that's red or reddish and something that's not of your typical skin tones. If you start getting into the natural skin tone, it's going to select too much and ruin your overall selection. We don't want to select everything. We just want the midtones. So add to your selection. I do love that effect, it's so creepy. Okay, so that's pretty good. As you can see, we've selected our midtones. Let me go ahead and zoom in. Next, go ahead and hold down Alt or Option and then click onto our Adjustments Layer panel and then choose Levels so we can have our own layer created for a selection. I'm gonna call this Darken. All right, great. So the midtones we need to adjust. The highlights you can leave alone, but the midtones we want to bring down quite a few points. Maybe bring that down to like a 0.7 or so. And then we're also going to have to adjust the output level as well. Go ahead and bring the output level beneath 200. Uh, let's try like 170. That looks good. And so that's a pretty convincing HDR effect. The only other adjustment you might want to make, and it's optional, but if you're going to be printing it, then you're also going to want to add another adjustment layer to preserve the highlights. Go ahead and go back to your adjustments, and then we're going to be creating another levels adjustment layer, and we'll go ahead and call this one Brighten. And with this, we're going to make just minor adjustments to the highlights to preserve those highlights if you were to print it. Okay, so that's looking great. We still have one final step in our process to achieve our HDR effect, and that is to go to Filter and then choose that of Sharpen and then go to our Smart Sharpen to increase the sharpness of our image and that's really going to achieve the HDR effect that we're going for. So no need to be shy with this. Go ahead and increase the amount pretty drastically. Any HDR effect is going to be incredibly sharp. Just the radius. And that you're going to have to be fairly sparing with for the radius adjustment. And everything else looks pretty good. Make sure you have Remove Lens Blur selected and the rest of the options, uh, you can experiment if you'd like, but I'm going to leave them as they are. And go ahead and choose OK. Now go back to this slider adjustment, and we're going to change that from the normal blending mode down to luminosity once again. 
Great. So now we've achieved our HDR effect. The next step is going to be making our filter to make her look like a zombie. So the first thing that we're going to be adjusting are her eyes. And so again, I mentioned that this effect or that adjustment was only necessary if we're going to be printing. Currently we're still working on screen, so I'm going to disable that for the time being. But now what we want to do is make a selection specifically on her eyes. So you can use any method that you want. I'm using the polygon lasso tool. And with this, when you use the polygon lasso tool, you have to make lots and lots of fine little adjustments. The pen tool might be more ideal for this as that gives a much more natural looking curve. Um, but this should be fine. It's an easy tool to use and shouldn't allow me to achieve the effect that I want. So go ahead and make your adjustments. And then once you have closed this selection, you also have to hold down shift then. So we're gonna be adding to this selection. So hold down shift, go to the other eye, and now we're going to make another selection over here. And that's not going to make a new selection, but add to the selection that we've already made. And I know it's lots and lots of little clicks, but if you're using the polygon lasso tool, just try to keep a natural looking curvature to the eye. Okay, that looks good. Now what we want to do is, now that we have our eyes selected, is go ahead and go up to the edit menu and then choose copy merged and then paste and that's going to create its own layer. Go ahead and name that layer eyes and we're going to be adding effects to this layer. So the first effect that we're going to be adding is going to be our gradient overlay. And what this is going to allow us to do is take away a lot of the human and emotional range of the eyes and it's going to make her look more like a zombie. I'm using a dark blackish reddish to a light gray, but you can use black to white or any colors you really want to, but I find that dark to light seems to sell the effect quite well. The next effect that we're going to be adding is going to be our inner glow. And that's going to make the light look of the eyes form a little bit better to the shape of the eyes. And you're gonna to have to experiment with some of the numbers and some of the adjustments there to make it work specifically for your image. Now we're gonna go into the outer glow and that's going to add a bit of a supernatural look as well as bring things together a little bit nicer. So go ahead and make the adjustments that you find work best. And we're gonna have one last effect and that's going to be the inner shadow. And what that's gonna do is just add some shape and curvature to the shape of the eye. And again, these are not universal numbers, so go ahead and experiment until you find something that creates the depth and effect that you'd like. I think that works really well. All right, great. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom out. And the next step is gonna be putting a sort of spotlight onto our character. So to do that, go ahead and choose your Crazy's Lab layer or the zombie layer, and then choose Gradient Overlay. And then once your layer styles panel is open, what we're gonna be doing is making sure that we're using the radial style. Make sure that the option is reversed. And then the angle, it's up to yourself what you think looks best, but we're trying to create a spotlight effect. And then if you're not going from a white to a black or if it's from a previous color selection, you can use one of the presets if you want or make adjustments. So go ahead and experiment and see what works best for your image. You do want it to be kind of dark, but you don't want it to be too dark and you have to see what works best for the image. I don't want it to hide the rest of the body too much. I'm just trying to eliminate a lot of the background and create a focus on the face. 
I also think that this effect works really well with the hands and how they're kind of creeping out of the darkness. Now that you have the light that you want and the effect they want for the light, go ahead and move it around and place it onto the face until you've found the right angle and the right spotlight effect that you're looking for. I think that looks pretty good. Go ahead and click OK. And the next step that we're going to do is create a gradient map that's going to allow us to change the tone of the image. So I'm going to make a new gradient map and I'm going to call this Dead Tones. And what I'm going to be doing is adding something that's going to give the effect of that of a zombie. And so I think that actually earth tones, so like your browns and greens and things that are very earthy or something that is like from the underground um, is going to work really well. Uh, so that's what I'm going to try and find is um, that of like a, almost like a military green. And it might take a while to find just the right tone that works best for the composition. So find the color and the tone that you think works best for your image. And I don't want it to be too green because then that reminds me of a witch and I don't want this to look like a witch, I want it to look more like a zombie. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, the teeth are shining, the eyes are shining. Maybe blend it a little bit better. Shadows are drastic. Let's go ahead and move the layer above our eyes layer. That way we have a uniform effect across the image. And then go ahead and name our layer or our adjustment dead tones. And now that you have the layer named, go ahead and double click on the layer in the gray space to bring up the layer style options. Then go ahead and adjust the underlying layer. If you hold down the Alter Option key, you're going to be able to separate and make finer selections and more drastic changes in between those tones. So what we're trying to achieve is bringing out some of the natural skin tones from her face. And so I think we've done exactly that. Go ahead and press OK. And just one final step to bring our image together. And that is going to be to add a filter to our image. So I have a grungy sort of a paper filter or image that we're going to be making into a filter. And we're going to blend that in through a multiply mode on top of our entire composition. So go ahead and bring that in. And that's going to be right on top. And I'm going to stretch this out to match that of the canvas size. And I happen to like this filter and this image works well for the effect that I wanted. But you might want a different type of an emotional range or a different color or maybe you want something more drastic. Maybe you wanted to add bats or grass or whatever it is as far as other things that are going to be in the scene. I just wanted to blend things together a little bit better. So that was the purpose for the filter for myself, but you might want to achieve something else. So I messed around with some effects. I'm just making some final adjustments into the placement. And this actually isn't the full stretch of the canvas. I've moved it around too much. I'm going to have to adjust that as well. I'm 
so I like that. I think that turned out pretty good. Let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah, I think that looks great. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I will see you in the next one.